Hello folks, this is Chris, KY4CKP, and today on LCAR Amateur Radio, we're going to be updating the firmware on the FTDX-10. That's what's coming up next, so stay tuned. Well, the first thing we're going to do is to properly format a micro SD card in the FTDX10 itself. So, uh, what I have here is a uh, Samsung 32 gig micro SD card, and we're going to put that here in the adapter. We're going to load that into the radio, turn on the radio, and we're just going to show the process on how to do the format. It's quite simple. Plug it all the way into the radio, turn the radio on, let it boot up, which takes just a moment, of course. Once we're booted up, we're going to hit the multifunction knob. We're going to go down to the uh, extra settings, and you can see your different sections here. You can use the uh, multifunction knob to move up and down. We're going to go to the SD card section, and right there at the bottom, we can see it says format. We're going to click on done. Format the card. Make sure there's nothing important <laughs> that you don't want to lose on this card. Click OK. Should run through a fairly short formatting process. Takes uh, just a few seconds. And this will get it formatted in a, in a proper format for the uh, be able to read and write to the card by the uh, FTDX10. Uh, formatting on Windows might work as well, but this is what's recommended. So the format's complete. You can just touch the screen and uh, we're ready to go so we're just going to back on out now being in the IT world I always like to shut things down before I add or remove SD cards so now we're just going to push and take it back out we'll jump back over to the computer and we'll load up the software and then bring that back over to the radio so we'll bring you folks right back okay folks in this segment we're going to go ahead and hop on over to the Yesu website we're going to go get and download the firmware for the FTDDX10. You can see right here on their homepage they've got the uh, link to their new radio. Uh, you can see the description tab, the accessories tab, and then here on the files tab. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down here towards the bottom. You can see the FTDX firmware update for 2021-05, uh, May of 2021. That is the newest one, so click and download that. I've already downloaded it, so I don't need to download it again. So let's go ahead and bring the folder over. So here's where I've downloaded it into its own uh, folder here under my downloads on Windows. There's the zip file that you would get. Let's go ahead and open that up. If you have a dedicated uh, archive program, WinZip, 7-Zip, anything like that, you can use that, or here in Windows 10, we can just say extract all and then it's going to put it right underneath this folder that we're in, so that's fine with me. Click Extract. So you can see it created this new folder, uh, and then inside this new folder we have the files. So you've got the PDF instructions, and then you've got the actual firmware files themselves. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and highlight these files. So I'm going to hold down the Shift key and use the arrow down, Highlight all of those, right click, I'm going to do a copy because we're going to be moving those to the SD card that we formatted uh, in the FTDX itself. Now I want to bring in the PDF file, I have the PDF file open and it just goes into the information on doing this, uh, this firmware update on your radio. Just follow through this, it talks about make sure you format the SD card just like we did a minute ago. Confirm your version. So uh, when you boot up the radio, hit that multifunction knob, go into the extension settings, and um, under software version, it will show you right here which version you currently have and whether or not you actually need uh, a new firmware version. Assuming we do, and, and I've checked, and I know that my main uh, firmware uh, version is 106 and the new one is 108, so I know I can use an update. Download the firmware, we just saw and did that. Now what they want you to do you download the zip file, you uh, use your tool of choice, you open that up, 
you grab those files. Now you don't need the PDF file, you just need those other files. Just open the PDF file for your reference, as we see here. Copy the firmware to your SD card formatted in the FTDX10. So let me bring that folder or that uh, yeah that folder open. So here we see removable disk F. This is my SD card, and you can see the FTDX folder that's automatically created during the formatting process. So you can see they they show the FTDX folder there. So we've got that. Now what they want you to do is to go into that folder. And you'll see that there's some default uh, folders created inside there. We're not going to go into any of those. What they want you to do is right here, immediately below the FTDX folder, is to put those files. So we're just going to click and go paste. There's the files that we had extracted from the zip file right here inside the FTDX10. We don't have to have any other subfolders. In fact, if you put any other folders, that will confuse the radio because it's going to be looking right here underneath the FTDX10 folder. So just put them in right there. There's all the individual files. Now, much of the time, you're probably not going to be updating everything on your radio. In fact, for my radio, everything is, is at the current levels, except for the main one. And uh, the main one, for me, I'm on 106, and we can see here the current one is 108. So that's really the only one we're going to be updating at this time. But... Whichever ones are updated, you know, you can update them all at once. If everything's ready to be updated, you can do that. If it's just one or two things, that's okay too. The process is the same. So we've got them on the SD card. We've got our uh, PDF file open so we can just follow along here. And as we scroll down a little bit, uh, they do, I think, a good job helping to outline the process. Turn off your radio, put in the SD card, boot the radio back up. Just like we did to format the SD card, Start with that function knob, click that, go to extension settings. Uh, of course, you put your SD card before you boot it up. Come in here under the SD card setting again, but instead of format there at the bottom, which is what we did in the first segment, one step up from there you can see is firmware, firmware update. We click uh, the done button there. Uh, and again, it'll give you a recap of what you've got and which components are going to be updated. We know that ours is going to be the main one. Uh, once you're ready, Click update. Now before you click update, if you've already created a lot of custom settings and things on your radio, be sure you've backed everything up. Okay, make sure you backed everything up. Go through and do the update. Okay. Let it run through its little process. Doesn't take real long, just takes a, a minute or two. Run through its process. When it's done, of course click OK. The update indicator will finish. Uh, when it's complete, power is automatically turned off and then automatically turned back on. Now, Yesu's position is that whenever you've done a firmware update, you should do a factory reset. This is why we said you should definitely back up all your settings before you do the firmware update. So, because you're going to do a factory reset. Press the function on extension settings, touch reset, um, do, do the complete reset, uh, and then when everything comes back on, then you can restore your settings. And that's pretty much all there is to doing uh, the firmware update. It's, uh, it's not really a hard procedure. It's probably something that a lot of us may not have done or, or done very often. So it never hurts to just follow along these instructions they give us as we go through this. So it's also a good idea, any sort of sensitive equipment like this that has firmware updates and things. Again, I work in the IT world, so uh, we've dealt with this all the time. It's always a good idea, whether it's your, your phone has an update, anything like that. Make sure that the device has plenty of battery power, you know, 50% or greater battery power, or make sure that uh, there's no heavy <laughs> thunderstorms going on right at the moment. Um, I've got uh, all my computer equipment and even my radios and things. I've got everything on battery backups. Uh, you can always go that route as well. So uh, never hurts to, uh, you know, to have uh, uh, surge protection and, uh, and battery backups for things. So that's the procedure to do this. Let's go ahead. We've got the files on the SD card now. So let's go ahead and take the SD card. We're going to move it back over to the radio. We'll boot it back up and we'll run through these procedures and let you see that on the actual radio itself. So uh, we're going to go ahead and move back over to the radio and we'll bring you folks right back. All right, folks, we're back over here at the radio. Let's go ahead and put in the SD card. And we'll boot up the radio, take a look at the firmware update process. As we saw in the PDF, it's actually pretty simple. 
you just want to make sure you're ready you've backed everything up as we saw hit the multifunction knob extension settings and uh, it's not coming through real clear on the radio uh, again use the multifunction knob to move around uh, going back under the SD card section this time the second option from the bottom which says firmware update click on the done uh, it will check and as long as you've created the SD card correctly it can show you all the versions that are there it will tell you what you need so in my case as I said earlier all I need is the main version so that is what is basically check marked there once we're ready again make sure you're triple sure you're ready uh, click update and we'll say are you sure click OK and you see it's going through the progress bar for the main firmware now if you were doing multiple firmwares at once it would just go through them in turn so as you see at the bottom there don't turn off the power just let it do its thing doesn't take too terribly long should reset the radio and then we'll go through and do a reset of the radio once that is done so not a particularly hard procedure one of those things we may not do very often or it may be the first time again you've got that PDF file you can just run through that it steps you through it pretty cleanly so we can see it's getting close to the end here give it just a few more seconds and the radio will reset and then we'll do a, go ahead and do a factory reset and then we should be good to go on the new firmware so there it goes finishing up see it rebooting pretty common for a lot of different devices to reboot after an update so it's rebooted we see it's back up now remember Gacy recommends you do a factory reset so let's go back in function knob extra settings let's go down down there to the bottom bottom selection says reset and it has all reset so we're going to do an all reset So remember, make sure you had everything backed up. Notice it's back to the regular FTDX10. My call sign's gone. So you have to put some of that stuff back in or re restore your settings from backup. But now we're on the new firmware. Uh, we've done the factory reset, and we should be good to go and be getting the full benefits of the new firmware. And that's all there is to it. It's, uh, it's not a hard procedure. It doesn't really take very long. Uh, just take your time, follow the PDF documentation, and you should be good to go. So that's pretty much it for this one, folks. Uh, enjoy your radio, whatever radio you have. Uh, I've got this new FTDX10. Haven't had it real long. Uh, been enjoying it, but uh, going to enjoy digging deeper into the features and so forth. And we'll probably bring you folks back for another video or two down the road. This is Chris, KY4CKP for Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, 73.